I'm Melissa with Trans Blue, and today I'm going to walk you through setting up a outdoor raised garden bed. This is really great if you don't have a lot of space or if you know you're new to vegetable gardening because you don't have to mess around as much with things like soil test kits or using compost and stuff like that. That's all skills that you can adapt later for right now. You know, go easy. Um, and uh, raised garden bed is a really great way to do that. The raised garden bed that we are going to be using today is made of cedar, which is a really good option because it is naturally pest repellent. Um, it has some nice biodegradable properties. Uh, and so you're gonna end up with a bed that lasts longer than if you were to use say like a treated wood or pine or something like that. Generally, you wanna start with a cedar. Uh, so we're gonna walk you through step-by-step step how we do this. Um, it's a pretty easy process. We actually bought the kit from Gardener Supply. So it comes with all the timber you need. The only thing you really need is a screwdriver to put it together and then you need some soil to fill up. So let's get started. So one of the nice things about this bed is it's really easy to put together. It comes with these interlocking pieces that you can literally just slide into each other, which is very, very nice. It makes it very simple. You don't need any tools. You can really just do it yourself. Other garden beds may require the use of screws or brackets or a drill or something like that. We were able to put this one together with nothing but a screwdriver and the included screws. One thing you'll notice as we're putting it together is that sometimes the fit isn't exact and it requires a little bit of wiggling or, you know, kind of shoving it into place, which isn't really unexpected. It's not cut exactly to fit. There's always going to be a little bit of wiggle room, but it was very, very simple to put together. We had very little trouble with it at any point, especially if you have another person to speed things up. That definitely helps. One thing you'll notice is that we actually have a bit of a slope in this part of our yard. It kind of slopes down on the right hand side. Um, so we decided to kind of push the uh, corners down and then line the boards up with the with the actual yard. Uh, and the reason for this was because we didn't want to have any dirt slipping out under the bottom and like making a little mess there. We do enough of that ourselves, so we just kind of made it like this. There's a little bit of bend in some of the boards. There's maybe a little bit of warping, but it really doesn't matter too much um, because the dirt goes in there and, you know, it'll hold it just fine. It's not a big deal. Altogether, it took us maybe 10 or 15 minutes to put the whole bed together. It, as I said, super, super simple. And even the labor itself is just very easy. It's, it's definitely not something that requires a lot of physical strength or any special tools or anything like that. Very easy overall. So the next thing we did here was we actually laid down some cardboard inside of the bed. And the reason for that is because cardboard can work as both a method of killing grass and as sort of a weed prevention. Usually what people do is actually use a weed fabric, but we had a lot of leftover packaging from ordering the dirt and the bed itself. So we just decided to put that in there. Watering it, as we did here, keeps it moist and that makes it easier to break down and also helps prevent termites if that's a concern for you. Cardboard is also minimally processed, which means that you know, it's not going to add a lot of chemicals or anything like that to your soil. The soil we use here is called Nature's Care. Um, it's an organic soil that's actually made by miracle Grow. We chose an organic soil because this bed is used primarily for growing vegetables, herbs, that kind of stuff. There's different varieties of it depending on where you're geographically located. So it may contain materials like peat or coir, which is like the hair on the outside of a coconut, which is really good for retaining water and being like pest resistant and that kind of stuff. It also contains some organic matter such as alfalfa meal, bone meal, earthworm castings, and kelp meal, all of which help promote plant growth. Generally speaking, you don't have to fertilize the soil for about a month after you fill your bed with it. They suggest using eight bags for a four by four bed. We purchased nine bags altogether and used seven of them. We could probably have filled it a little bit more, but we didn't, or we kept those extra two bags in case we want to use them for a different gardening project, or we can always add them to this bed later. So one of the things you'll see that we do here is we actually spread the soil out um, after we dump a bag. And the reason for that is sometimes the soil clumps while it's in the bag or it gets kind of compacted, and that's not great for, for plants especially if you're planting seedlings. The seedlings are, are, you know, they can be kind of tender and they need a little help to grow. So breaking the soil up and spreading it out not only makes it easier for the plants or roots to grow through, 
but it also means that it's easier to work with so you don't end up with like giant hills of, of compressed dirt or anything like that as you're as you're working on your raised bed. Um, so go ahead and spread that out nicely as you are dumping additional bags of soil in. So here you can see the texture of the soil. It's very loose. It's got a nice dark color. It has a nice texture to it. It's not made too much of any one material that usually gives plants more more nutrients and also means that they have an easier time growing because they're not you know struggling against rocks or big pieces of dirt or big pieces of mulch or whatever. The last step on the bed is actually just to screw in these little top pieces. Again, very, very easy. We just used a screwdriver and banged those things in and then screwed them in. Very, very easy. So here's the bed a month later. You can see that the soil still looks great, still got a great color, great texture, and I've planted some green onions from kitchen scraps. These green onions have been growing out here for about a week, and I would say they've grown about an additional inch, which is great. So that's it. A very, very easy backyard project, and you can plant kitchen scraps in there. You can plant seedlings. Um, you can plant starters for different fruits and vegetables, um, but do if you are worried about rabbits or any other kind of hungry animal that might hang out in your backyard, grab some cages or some chicken wire or something to take care of it. And that's it.